Welcome back to the Cool Kids Podcast. I'm your host, Kev Salvatierra. This is the podcast where we talk to everyone about everything. The wonderful music you're hearing right now is by the wonderful Yo Tom Perel. Please check him out on Spotify and Bandcamp. And, uh, you know, yeah, episode uh, episode six. Uh, this one's fun. This one's pretty chill. Um, hope you guys are all staying safe. You know, all my fellow Canadians, hope you guys are staying at home. Lockdown's hitting pretty hard. But um, I hope you guys just keep up the good work social distance and all love y'all wonderful all right hello welcome to the cool kids podcast i'm your host kev salvatura uh things are a little different as you can see um ontario uh canada like as in general uh has entered another lockdown good old fun times it's the second second one coming we had one in january and um i figured that you know we should do it safely do it remotely like this um i also brought in a uh wonderful medical expert um she's personally my family doctor (laughs) um oh my goodness her name is uh arwa halal md Oh my goodness. Say hi, Arwa. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Arwa? I'm so good, Kiev. I miss you. I haven't seen you in so long. It's been it's been way too long. The it's fuck? Been... Holy shit. The fact that um there's the second lockdown of our lifetimes is just uh another thing to share with the people that we're gonna be older with and be like, yeah, I fucking <laughs> To go my, that's through what my, my mom uh, says. lockdown with my best friends. My mom's always Straight like, up, like <laughs> my mom's always like, I can't like I'm so happy about this, and I'm like, why? She's like, well, it's like like we're living through history. It's like really interesting. I don't care. I want to go outside. I want to hang out with my friends. Like, that's true. I'm sure the same people thought the same thing during the war. You know, people yeah. Were just like, oh, or even this kind of s- sucks. Yeah. Yeah, or even like the flu, like there was a pandemic, a flu pandemic, like a hundred years back, Not the nineteen eighteen yeah. influenza pandemic, and I'm, it was like just like this. See, as as you can see, my guest here, Arwa, <laughs> is um a fucking smarty pants, <laughs> a mm. real a real big brained Jimmy Neutron esque <laughs> kid. Um, I. I have to do my little character introduction. What am I doing? Arwa over here is not my family doctor, um, but <laughs> soon she will be the family doctor of many. She is a, uh, what's your major? In, I'm uh, in McMaster. I'm in health sciences. Health sciences. Yeah, she's going to be a fucking future doctor. We all know that. Every single one of Arwa's friends knows that. She's in one of the hardest schools ever. McMaster, represent um (laughs) i'm unintentionally representing i didn't mean to but i'm wearing their merch i wear i have a mcmaster hoodie that i wear um just to make people like feel (laughs) impressed by me and they're just like oh not only does this kid look stylish this kid goes to mac stylish and uh, and goes to to mac those are rare (laughs) (laughs) literally everyone the everyone at mcmaster is a fucking nerd Shouts out to the McMaster people, but everyone there is a nerd, including my own sister. So, shots fired. Um, I've known Arwa for a good bit now. I've known her for about, like, two, three years at this mm-hmm. point, I would say. I think closer um, to three. From, yeah, closer to three. From the first time I ever met Arwa, um, I, I dissed the fuck out of her. <laughs> insulted me back and i already knew like ah hell yeah i got myself a a a great old friend and i i wanted to talk to you on the podcast arwa do you have any words for yourself um hi nice to be here i'm very excited i'm a big fan actually i have to say of your podcast i watch it very adamantly and very often um a favorite episode of mine was liam's i thought that was funny (laughs) <laughs> Liam's episode that that one was the most hectic out of all of them holy shit it was very hectic but, um, <laughs> but enjoyable I, I have a feeling but enjoyable yeah I, I love me a little bit of chaos but I feel like this one's gonna be very chill considering the circumstances you know mm-hmm. 
I know everyone always talks about COVID. It's like, oh, COVID this, COVID that. But it's become a very real part of our lives. And I feel um, someone to ask, you know, like you. It'd be very interesting to find out what you think of it all. Um, when uh, COVID just started rolling out, what was like your immediate reaction like you saw the headline of wuhan virus whatever it was what what mm. do you think well i should preface i i'm no way an expert this is just my my somewhat educated maybe uneducated opinion but when i remember when um the like we started hearing about covid it really wasn't that big of a deal it was like a china issue so you know that's not our problem in in the first world so but I remember watching like a video of like a Chinese doctor crying and being like, it's so much worse than like they're saying, like the government is hiding information about it. That really freaked me out. So, I, you know, I was really freaked out when we started. I don't know if you remember, but it was really like March 13th, like Friday the 13th, that everything kind of went to shit and everybody got sent home from school and everything like that that's when I had to leave my dorm and I remember thinking like damn like there's no way this is gonna end in two weeks because that's how they were prefacing it they were gonna be like oh it's like a you know this is a short issue we'll get it dealt with and then we'll be back but like it was very apparent that this was gonna be at least a couple months long and now it's probably very likely gonna be years of our lives that are gonna be like I know it's so terrible to admit but like that's really the reality <laughs> Shit. My biochem professor was talking about how he doesn't even think I'm going to be back on campus next semester, like for the next year, my first semester of my third year. Um, he thinks it's likely maybe the th second semester, but not <laughs> not the first because of oh, just how Jesus. bad the situation is. I know. Yeah. Way to, way to fill us with all the hope we can. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> no. I know. <laughs> it's so depressing. No, it's I like, know. I, I think it's an unfortunate truth. Uh, mm -hmm. everyone has to do, like come to terms with the the amount of customers I serve they always complain about the mass and you know they're always like oh stay hopeful you know maybe it'll disappear next week you know <laughs> and everyone thinks that like just because a vaccine rolls out uh, everyone's like yes yes we're gonna be fine we're gonna be okay on a on a part yes we are gonna be fine but even someone like me a dumbass can see that it's not going to be the end of it you know mm -hmm. it's 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 like it's like uh in movies where uh like a zombie movie they're just like oh we found a cure <laughs> yeah right? exactly oh yes like uh, like we found a cure yay we get to celebrate and the end of the movie is them walking towards the sunset no one ever really thinks about like who the fuck are they gonna cure like mm -hmm. and on top of that survivors how how are they gonna distribute it? That's a big issue. Uh, that's something that we're currently dealing with is the problem with distribution because it's like, what countries get it? Like, are we gonna prioritize the first world because they have the resources or like the third world countries who don't have the means of getting the vaccines? Like there's so many problems and it's so complex. It gives me a headache just Ugh. thinking about it. But like, I don't know. It's I feel like- fucking what giving we... me a headache. <laughs> it's, it's our new reality for however long it may be. I think like right now, personally, what I'm trying to do is like, not get depressed living in lockdown and in quarantine by like you know trying to live my life even though i'm like locked in my house so you know yeah it, it makes sense you know like we we all kind of have to just um just live our lives right now as much as we can i mean i, I i've been doing it with decorating my room here i love and, it it uh, looks so nice thank you there's a little skeletons up there but um yeah like uh i'm doing this podcast so that mm -hmm. that gives me a little bit of a little bit of fun in between the not doing anything for the rest of like most days mm -hmm. but um i think i think that's a that's a way to leave off uh like COVID. <laughs> just be like everyone it's gonna get worse but we're all gonna be fine collectively we will you know? in in 10 years this is gonna be a distant memory hopefully Ooh. Uh, cool. well, maybe <laughs> some people are probably going to have like major fucking PTSD and stuff. And there's going to be like those fucking conspiracy theorist truthers that are just mm. going to be like, oh, it actually it was fake all along. You know, we never had a virus. It, it was it was the government. It was Barack Obama. He he went back to China and he <laughs> it's like, 
Ugh. The people, no, 100%. Oh God, people like that, they they upset me so much. <laughs> and, like, I, I, I refuse to believe that it's taboo to call these people fucking out, right? Like, no, when these I think news it's organization, valid. Yeah. Like, these news organizations that are, are trying to just weave around trying to show, like, the full sp- perspective so they get every audience member, including the truthers. Like, it's just... They'll just show someone saying, like, I believe the the uh the coronavirus is fake and uh china is just secretly developing a weapon while they're all doing it and then like it cuts back to the news reporter and they're just like well tom that was interesting (laughs) in other news wonder woman 1984 has come out on hbo max and crave it's just like ugh fucking call them out just literally be like um these people are idiots don't spread misinformation about covid because you're gonna damage a lot more than you think Mm -hmm. you're gonna do good it's you know what though it's like it's like a lack of scientific like like literacy you know and i blame the education system for like failing i don't know the americans the canadians too to an extent there's a lot of people here who are like convinced that it's like like either they don't want to take the vaccine because they're like oh this is unsafe it was made too fast or whatever or they're like they're like oh this was made from china like they're trying to like invade us or it's the government like trying to get in my system or whatever like i don't know if the government was really that interested in watching you they really could through your phone through cameras on the street like it's very easy to so i don't know why the government would waste its time making a small ass microchip to like be injected into your arm during a va- like what the heck if bio it like literally if- Sorry, if engineers can make that small of a microchip, like, that would be extraordinary. I don't think I've ever heard of a microchip that fucking small. It, it is so stupid. I mean, like, may, what the fuck are they going to do with microchips? Are they going to know your thoughts? <laughs> fuck no. Maybe they'll know their, your vitals. And it's just like, Ooh, oh, it's so scary. <laughs> he's got a heartbeat of 180 uh, beats per minute. Insane. Arrest this man. <laughs> like, I knew it. The Bill Gates microchip is the one that's affecting me. <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking, yeah, no. Everyone everyone needs a better education, I feel, with this mm-hmm. type of shit, you know. Like, so many people are going to be misinform- misinformed. And even, like, I could be misinformed. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't know. But I, every single time, I try to make sure i'm getting every side of the fucking story you Mm -hmm. know and um yeah education is a fucking very interesting thing for you to talk about (laughs) um the i i look up to you arwa mainly because you are like my friend who is also like way too way too smart like smarter than me you're you're smart you to the point where like too you kind. <laughs> oh, it's whatever Arwa. <laughs> but um you are you're smart to the point where it's like you don't have to necessarily say anything for you to be smart. It's just chance moments that I've seen you display your intelligence. Like when you uh disc- when you're talking about the fucking you send me Snapchats of you and your lab, and you're like, oh, guys, I'm learning about the fibula and the tibula. <laughs> and it's just like, you you have this big-ass extensive knowledge, and you go on this whole thing. It's like, how am I supposed to know? Chemoid AB is supposed to mix in with <laughs> genoid GC. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I'll, I'll find out. And the next snap is you going like, hey, guys, I got an A-plus on my test. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm just like, oh, my God god it's like i i I can confidently say i i have not met someone with the knowledge that you possess oh kiev Um, (laughs) you're making my heart grow three times its size you're so nice wow fucking little grinch (laughs) little grinch baby um there there is something that i think about though when it comes Mm -hmm. to you and your intelligence especially especially being from mcmaster um my per my perceived notion of uh intelligent people is that they can be very competitive in a in a different sense like different from your regular student athletes there's like i'm trying to be the number one of the number one the best of the best like 
I think smart people, I've seen it in like my high school. Um, there's a weird, weird sense of like tension between different intelligent people. Mm-hmm. They're just like, whether or not they're like questioning other questions, just going like, but are you sure you're supposed to do this? Because I did the calculation a while ago <laughs> and it says you're supposed to do this. Um, the question I want to pass off to you is uh, have you ever been in any type of situation where you kind of felt your intelligence was being challenged and whether like whether or not you believe that smart people are also competitive? Um, for sure. I wouldn't even like I don't even want to say I don't know. I feel bad like being like, oh, as a smart person, like I don't really even like identify myself to be that. I'm you're, just like you're, you get a pass. <laughs> I just I'm you know I I would like to consider myself hardworking and I go to a amazing school filled with very hardworking kids but definitely for like especially I, I mean I'm a STEM major so that's all I know right I'm in science for science it, it's very competitive especially pre med which is what I'm trying to pursue right now I'm I'm technically pre med um very competitive whether it's like obvious or like low key the people are just going to be competitive i find myself accidentally competing against my friends who i live with like you know it's and you can't help it because we're all going towards the same goal and you know that goal is not always accepting of everybody they take a very small amount of people so you kind of have to it's like a very ugly reality but i i know for me personally and my friends too we try to avoid it as much as we can um i know a lot of like really smart kids who are super nice, super charismatic, and they are not competitive whatsoever. They help everybody. Like, it's not like, like I definitely have met a lot of competitive, like especially competitive health sides and stuff like that, but there are definitely a lot of like really nice people who understand that like beating each other down isn't like the way to go. But it's hard because like, you know, when you want something and everybody else wants it, you're bound to like low-key compete. And I feel like this is with anything, right? Like, if you and somebody else was going towards the same job or something, like you're gonna low key compete, even if you don't intend to. So, it is what it is. Yeah. No. Uh, all right. Yeah. Like <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good explanation of like smart people. It's definitely a lot more positive because when when I talk amongst you know it's it's such a different community between intelligent people and dumbasses. People aren't really dumbasses. It's just more of like a charming term to me to refer to my friends. It's like, oh yeah, all my friends are dumbasses, right? Um, how like how I saw it was that, um, you know, a lot of people that are on the same intelligence level as me just kind of like pass it through it. Especially in high school, there's a lot of those people, and you have the select smart people. A lot of um, uh dumbasses i'll just say dumbasses as a, <laughs> as a as an easier way of doing it a lot of dumbasses like to um look at smart people especially in high school and kind of just be like Ugh, like they roll their <laughs> eyes it's just like of course yeah who who would get the question right yeah of course it's arwa um <laughs> and like it's happened it's happened in my school before where I will overhear people whispering to each other, just going like, yeah, of course she got the answer. Of course she got 100%, right? (laughs) And I realized that it's more so kind of like a thing of not really making fun of them, but almost like a a jealousy towards Mm. uh, smart people. Because I think a lot of us want to be smart, you know. Obviously, it, it, it very much can happen. In the words of Gusteau, right? from <laughs> ratatouille uh anyone can be a chef that's not true when it comes to oh. smart people like <laughs> there's well, actually, only a select few i kind of disagree on with that on you because when you say smart people i think what you're thinking of is like book smart or academia right but there are so many different types of intelligences so to say smart person is to say you're not really like there is no i don't think there's such a thing as a smart person there's a person who's interested in certain things and has strengths in certain things that allows them to like pursue certain goals but that doesn't mean i'm any smarter than you for example like you like like your knowledge for example of movies and music i could never do something like that or style like fashion i couldn't like bro i dress like a second grader like you can't like and just <laughs> hey, because I, like i said that to you before <laughs> 
<laughs> you and you're right like 100 percent. but like just because i'm pursuing this pathway which has been like socially con- like it's been like labeled as oh it's like the top of the pathways like one of the better ones like go become a lawyer become a doctor like those are the smart pathways the successful ones it's not true like in my opinion i'm like you know we live such a short life pursue what you love and you have different strengths to help you do that so i i would say i'm hopefully maybe like academically intelligent but i musically i'm a dumbass i could never play music and you're good at music i could not play for the life of me you're very musically intelligent i am not so there are very different types of intelligences and so yeah that's what i think about that i think anyone really like i don't know i think everybody has their own strengths um and i don't think there's such a thing as one smart person they're just smart in a certain way if that makes any sense okay that 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 is a fair point. Maybe I'm too being hard <laughs> on my on my fellow dumbasses. <laughs> it, it I I think it's just so interesting. It's that like I think smart people, right? I I mean everyone's smart in their own way, of <laughs> course. But I think um, just there's such a simple like notion of what smart is mm-hmm. to me and to like a bunch of other people where they they picture book smart they picture academia you know like i only know mcmaster as a school full of like a lot a lot of book smart intelligent academic academically like cool people Mm -hmm. right and then like you have people like rarison where it's a mix of these very intelligent people but also like mix of people in media and you have Guelph Humber, which is comprised entirely of dumbasses. No! Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, it's just like, no slander to my fellow G, GHers, but it, it's it just, ma- it makes it just me feels sad. so weird being surrounded by Humber. <laughs> it's like such a smart school with technology and all this updated shit, and we're a little rectangle in the oh. center. I've never seen Guelph Humber. Isn't, isn't that weird? I've only, like, I've seen pictures of Guelph and stuff. I don't know. Is Guelph the same thing as Guelph Humber? Or is it, like, a connected no. thing? I literally have no idea. Guelph Humber is more Humber than it is, like, University of Guelph. Oh, There I are see. emerging of those schools where, like, you have the same programs from Humber, also same programs from Guelph and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But, um... Yeah, there's a reason why you don't see uh, Guelph Humber. It's because it's behind the big <laughs> ass fucking cyberpunk futuristic building oh that God. stretches 20 acres and a little like fireman training circle and a football field and an arboretum. And then right there, the little tiny 4x4 four four me- uh, mega block. That's, <laughs> that's our fucking, that's our school. Did you like Guelph Humber? I don't mean to be I, I haven't heard you talk about your school that much when you were there. Um, I think that's mainly because um, there isn't really much to talk about. How how I uh like to explain it is that every single time I go to TikTok, I see these TikToks that are just like, oh. Uh, different Canadian universities <laughs> represented through audio or images and shit like that. And every it, and it's like it's always like universities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like different Canadian universities. And I'll never see the University of Guelph Humber in any of them. Why? Because there's very much nothing to talk about. You mm. can talk about University of Guelph more. You could talk about um humber college more but you can't talk about guelph humber because it's just very much like a plain ass school it's like nobody talks about elementary schools oh. <laughs> or daycares like shit it, like it, it, no one really talks about it. and that's not a bad thing because I, I like guelph humber you know mm-hmm. i think they're they're a good school. They have a great curriculum. The teachers sometimes are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should call out my teachers. On the what if they're on watching, the Kiev? Oh my goodness. Yeah, what if Shoebox is your... watching? Oh, Shoebox has literally been one of your biggest fans, secretly watching your podcast, and now you just called them out. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Shoebox. I hope you're having a good time. <laughs> um, no, like, um, when I went to school, 
I, 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 th I think of school more so as the social aspect than it is the educational aspect, whether or not that's the education system failing or that's just me. That's, it's just how I like approached it. So a lot of my importance was working more on my social interaction than it was uh, my academic one. Because mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I'm I'm all right. I'm all right when it comes to academics. I think I could pull through with essays. I I'm pretty good with, like with English and media and shit like that. And I oh, I love learning. Like I love learning new things and especially if it's something so intriguing. Like I thought journalism would be like a really shitty class to me, but it ended up being like one of my favorites because the teacher was uh like a journalist for the mm -hmm. fucking toronto star and he was insane he talked about how he walked into crime scenes and he looked around before the police did <laughs> or he looked at like he snuck into retirement homes to find out how the um the staff there have been mistreating the Whoa. elderly right like this is shit that he's actually done and he talks about it and he cites it and he's just like you know I implore you guys to do like the same, you know, mm -hmm. find out, do your research. Um, but back to how I see it, um, for the first like week of uni, I was focused entirely on like, I should find a friend because mm -hmm. I would hate to like go through classes fucking alone. Like shit, that sounds annoying. It's my mm -hmm. worst nightmare. And for the first week, I didn't find anyone. And I remember calling Claire uh, shout out to my girlfriend um, and just like almost crying almost in tears in the hallway just going like I literally feel so out of place here I don't think there's anyone here that's like me um, anyone here that will like me and then she's like no you'll find someone and then the following week I did find a friend uh, shout out to Sophia my fellow guitarist for my band I didn't know that's and how you also... met Sophia that's so cute I thought she was like a high school friend Oh, no, no. We met in uh, university. Uh, fucking, I love telling this story. I've never told this story, like, in a video format. But so the first time I ever, like, met her, it was in photography class. And it was, like, it was that week of, like, just trying to find out, like, playing icebreakers, essentially, trying to find out what the fuck's going on with everyone. Mm -hmm. And they split us up into groups and we would alternate to different groups, find out more about each other, answer some questions on the board. Just be like, oh, what's your favorite color? Who's your favorite <laughs> singer? What's your favorite movie? And I was in this group and there was like, <laughs> the question was, um, if you could bring anyone back from the dead to have a conversation with, um, who would it be? And like I'm all, I me being the asshole I am, I'm already thinking of a shit ton of these stupid fucking answers. It's like, oh, I I'd like to bring back uh, Doctor Seuss to make Cat in the Hat three, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. Um, and then the very first person to talk was literally just like, I would um like I would bring back this family member of mine that passed away like a long time ago. I just want to know. Like I just want to know what was going through their head. And you were and really about like, to say oh. cat in the hat. That's what I want to know. I was I was so close. I was just like fuck, thank God it didn't land on me. Like thank God for that. Um sorry. Just got to do something real quick. And um Yeah, so fucking uh, like, it just goes around in a circle, and I, I, I give in my kind of, like, bullshit answer. Uh, I give in my bullshit answer, um, as to, like, what I, who I would bring back, and I say, like, my great, great ancestors, see what's up. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we then, like, finally switch around the question to make it more lighthearted. Uh... And uh, I, I just like, this isn't even a funny joke that I said. And I was just like, I mean, there's a lot of, I, I literally said this word for word. And it's like, I mean, there's a lot of people you could bring back from the dead. You know, a lot of people you wouldn't want to bring back from the dead, you know, like Hitler. And like three people, like the three other people looked at me and going like, 
and they were just like that. And like I just see Sophia and she puts her like fucking head in her oh hands. Oh my and she's, god. Like, trying to like hide in as much laughter as she could. And then later on throughout the entire class we were just like, Yo man, what's up? It's like let's fucking let's be yeah. friends essentially. And I love this yeah, origin this... story of you guys. That's so cute. <laughs> it's just it's just funny to me, like, you know, you could always find people like that in mm-hmm. like university people that you vibe with i'm sure you found yourself a group of i'm people. living with mm-hmm. five of them you know what though i got lucky because i i know two of them technically like from high school like i'm my closest roommate mira like i knew her from high school we were really close in high school and then i'm also living with another girl Alyssa. i don't know do you know Alyssa murdoch oh i shouldn't say her. like i don't know if i should say her full name but uh shouts out to Alyssa murdoch <laughs> but yeah so i she was also in high school um with us so but i was never really close with her but i got lucky so because i ended up rooming with my friend mira and because we roomed together she's super social so i got like the benefits of that because she was also really close friends with um Alyssa, and Alyssa had another roommate which neither of us knew and so i got to be friends with that girl who is katriel who i also live with and then we met another person from our residence alicia who we all became friends with and now she lives with us and then Alyssa found somebody named maddie now she's our friend she lives with us and these are really the only friends that i have i have like <laughs> i have like friends like oh a, i'm fu- oh, fuck me right <laughs> university <laughs> friends university friends you're not important kiev to this store i'm just kidding um but yeah wow. so the, i would say they're like my close friends from university like i have like other friends from uni but like like none that i would actively see like a few of them but not you know not as close as these girls so i got lucky yeah. i think Living on res is a big help, I think, especially for socialization, because you're there all the time and you get paired up with a roommate. So yeah. I cheated my way to friendship. By people. Yeah, exactly. That's good. That's real nice. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I I always thought living. I never got to live on res, like in any situation. I guess my old living situation, living with a bunch of roommates. That's like my version of res. But I always thought it was like fucking. I don't know, interesting whenever I would visit Sophia, who did live on res, mm. and, like, just the little community that they made, and they're f- on their floor, and the next floor is a whole new different community, and then the next floor is a whole new community, mm. and it's just, like, god damn, like, every- everyone just knows each other, it's almost like seeing a bunch of young senior citizens mowing oh. the lawn, and going, like, hey, Jim, how are you? But in this case, it's, like, <sighs> society y'all fucking like yo you catching the fucking why do they talk like this i don't know it's like you catching a fucking party later i was like yeah bro yeah <laughs> like yeah but you sound I exactly like a college student <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man school what a fucking bore what a bore what a terrible Blech. time <laughs> so, fuck school um there there is something I did want to talk about with you. I need to get over this like thing where I keep on saying like there's something I need to talk about. I feel like that sounds very annoying. It's like the fucking very good transition. Like, actually, yeah. actually, <laughs> like oh my god. But um, I think what's very interesting, another very interesting about you, Arwa, is that mm-hmm. um, on the outside, you know, everyone knows you. You're like a very a uh, smart, intelligent person. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, good, good old Arwa. Wow, goody, goody two shoes. I think <laughs> what's uh, funny to me, though, is uh, you share essentially the same exact humor as uh, I do <laughs> on, a daily, <laughs> on a daily basis. I know you said, like, oh, I don't know anything about music or movies. But one of the things that genuinely caught me off guard was uh your knowledge in uh internet like (laughs) internet stories and (laughs) videos and drama you know what though it's because i was such a i was such a youtube kid like in middle school i was like i watched all the gamers and i was so in tune with the drama like i used to follow drama alert and shit like that like i was really like into that kind of stuff like i was such a that oh my god you know all the like little boys who like you know they just watch youtube and then they like play minecraft and shit like you know that kind of like that was me (laughs) that was me i was a little boy (laughs) yes i was that in in middle school so i have an unusually amount like large amount of knowledge about like youtube shit 
that's phenomenal though because uh it's <laughs> like it's literally like um i i always i was such a youtube kid too like i i uh grew up in the philippines and when we had our computer i used to actually just go on youtube when it first started out and just watch these videos and then um when i moved to canada i found out about like you know your classic youtube people fred <laughs> niga higa um fucking bart baker uh you know oh my god bart and, baker like, it, i loved him isn't it you know so what he does now just hearing people's names like that do you know what he does now you're gonna freak out you're gonna lose your mind Oh shit! He does the he does the uh, the like, Chinese live streams or yes! something. Yes, <laughs> it's so weird. He he like sings. He like sings song. What the heck? It was so weird. I thought it was a joke because I saw them. On, I saw it on TikTok. I was like, okay, all right, like calm down. I know we all miss Bart <laughs> Baker. And then I check his fucking like Twitter or his TikTok. He's literally just doing that. It's so weird. <laughs> he does it for he does it for money. It's like a, he's a huge. He's like um. A white man in China, which is why I like the Chinese community loves him so mm -hmm. much. He's like, oh, look at the crazy white man. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at him dance So weird, sing. though. And when you look into his eyes, you see how dead and empty they are. <laughs> like, you, you just see, like, oh, I have to scream on camera every single day. It's like what Lucas Cruikshank could have been, a.k.a. Fred. Is he still posting? I ha literally haven't thought of him in, like, at least three years. Yeah, he he posts. He he's essentially like the equivalent to like what what I call a Nickelodeon YouTuber. Um it's like uh it's like people like the Fine Bros. It's kind of like uh what Shane Dawson was back in the day, you know, when he was doing his little blackface skits and um fun. Uh, <laughs> but um he's it's just like a very much content um produced mainly for like the younger crowd but also being almost like just a bit more edgy you know mm. when you watch iCarly and Victorious I get those mm. same feelings or like Zoe 101 it's like oh I shouldn't be watching this I feel like an older kid now <laughs> but it was made for me I know it was <laughs> like mm -hmm. um but holy fuck like uh, I've been thinking recently about old YouTube and just like what it was like, just the simple. It was days a completely of... different YouTube. It was so much like, like child friendly, but also there was a like you could swear and do shit that was inappropriate, and you wouldn't get taken down for it. Now it's like extremely censored, but also still very toxic. Like I don't like the YouTube yeah. atmosphere now. I still watch it, but I don't like it. Like before, it was like. It, I don't know. It's completely different. I remember, like, and also the popular YouTubers. They were completely different people. Now I think I think it's mostly gamers that are really popular on YouTube right now. Or, like, because th yeah. that's all I see really popping up on my, like, recommended. But, like, back then it was, like, like lifestyle vloggers or, like, daily whatever is things like that and like the, the children nice types mm -hmm, exactly and then like the children like channels like annoying orange fred you know fine bros shit like that yeah like uh gamers have gotten an uprising when it comes to like the audience and i think that's mainly because of people like uh pewdiepie or even mm -hmm. people like uh like everyone talks about these gamers that I don't even fucking know, like Corpse Husband or fucking um this guy this dude. I'm who so plays ashamed that I know competitive everything. Minecraft. <laughs> like Dream. I know everything like, here. I know I all of them. Such oh a fucking goodness. YouTube nerd. <laughs> I should be putting my energy towards fucking studying. I shouldn't know about Corpse. <laughs> But, like, it, it, yeah, the atmosphere has changed. There is a lot more of a drama aspect. There is more mm -hmm. of a that TMZ type, um, like, oh, look at what the Hype House is doing kind of deal. Like, they're not YouTubers, but they started a YouTube channel, and they're still mm -hmm. very popular, you know? And, like, drama is, like, what fuels them. And even, like, the the OG ones that I remember that are just, like, you know, I like them because they were away from all that drama. Now they've gone into more of the drama, like H three H three. Yeah. You know, just recently Trisha Paytas left the podcast for like the third time. <laughs> and now they're like their brother and sister in law, 
Like, so weird. Uh, like, so weird. Oh God, like, it's such a strange <laughs> thing. It fills me with such uncomfortable energy. It's fucking, ugh. God. If you told me a year ago that <laughs> Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein would become brother and sister-in-law, I would have been like, you're fucking nuts. Like, completely different worlds. <sighs> But now like, it they is. are different worlds. Trisha Paytas is such a fucking weirdo. Not gonna lie. Y'all I know. Trisha I f- Paytas stands, y'all are fucking weird too. <laughs> I feel bad for like I pity her because I feel like she she like it was it's clear that like she was she was struggling with her mental health for like a while. But she like it kept like I don't know, the comments and the YouTube atmosphere like fueled it and like made it made her keep doing it i don't know how to explain that but like she just never had a chance to like take a step back and really take a step back and like fix herself so she constantly is on youtube and constantly making it worse like if you watch her old videos she was a lot more like normal now she's a lot more erratic and like making a lot of like drama filled videos that like cause her to be in a lot of like problems i just feel bad for her but like the fact that she ended up with like uh, what is it hila hila i forget her name hila's hila's brother yeah, the fact that she ended up with her brother is so weird to me. But they, like, they don't look bad. Like, they look kind of, like, stable. <laughs> I'm like, wow, good job, Trisha. I mean, I, I, I wish all the hope, like, all the best for her. But, uh, oh, my God, shit. Ow. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> um, it's just fucking weird. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think youtube is just so filled with drama now i miss the days where i could watch fucking like sky does minecraft fucking Ugh. reviewing the butter mod and it's like it replaces all gold bricks with butter and it's like oh my god and it's like haha lol epic funny i love it and now you know it's what just i'm realizing these fucking fortnite vtubers yeah i'm realizing it's re- like maybe youtube's the problem like the actual platform because you you mentioned youtubers and i can think of at least one co- like controversial thing that came out about them or some problem that they were a part of like sky does minecraft had a whole dispute with like ksi and then also between him and his baby mama like his ex right yeah a whole problem where the kid was in between and it was such a big deal and i can think of a like conflict for every single youtuber it's because i don't know i just don't like like youtube is kind of toxic it's just as a platform it's pretty toxic i'm gonna show my my little look at this kiev kiev look at this it's fucking it adorable, dude. It's like yeah. literally so cute. It's a little tiny. Like, what are you gonna hang on it? But <laughs> <laughs> even um, oh my god, I literally completely lost my train of thought. What the fuck was uh, I even talking about? Even talking about YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we were talking about YouTube. I think um, yeah. I I've become. Oh, I remember. I've become more of, like, a Twitter user, weirdly. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I use Twitter a lot now. And it's not like I have a following on Twitter. I just like using it. But social media, in general, has become such a weirdly, like, welcome, all, all are welcome, but fuck you if you even say anything about BTS. Like, and then, like, (laughs) send their fucking hordes of fans over, and it's just... It's such a shit show. Like, all these social media websites, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, they all are now thriving off of more negative discourse than they Mm -hmm. are, like, just, you know, plain, regular shit, right? Even, like, the most fucked YouTubers that I can name. Like, Filthy Frank, you know, classic dude. Everyone loves Filthy Frank, right? When he was popular, it was at a time in YouTube where it truly was like, yeah, make your own shit. Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it all, you know? So he made fucking, like, hair cake, vomit cake, fucking these disgusting, (laughs) horrid videos. But I could remember the YouTube atmosphere was so much more different there where Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, go on YouTube and see anyone really talking drama, right? No one really talking about anything. It was just like these fucking weirdos, Filthy Frank, Idubs, even people like Chris Raygun, who I like watched for his political commentary. Mm -hmm. He's like a funny fucking dude, you know, and he never really got into drama. And if there was drama, it'd be resolved. 
But mm-hmm. now it's so much more negative where it's like, if you go after Shane Dawson, you're going after me. It's like, oh, if you're going after me, then you're going after James Charles. And if you're going after James Charles, you're going after Tana Monju. And it's like fucking clans of these fucking Stan, Stan clans just going like, <laughs> oh, fuck you. My YouTuber is better. Like, mm-hmm. James Charles recently was in some shit because he was uh, judging um, black people's haircuts and like makeup and just really? going like, oh, it's like, I could do such a better job than you, honey. And then, like, every single person was just like, oh, um, no. Anyways, <laughs> but like these fucking fans just come into James Charles's defense and they're just going like, uh, he has a point, you know, like all you guys look so dusty, y'all look mm. caked up and like fucking James Charles makeup at like hourly rate is $2,000 for a fucking session. Like it literally like fucking doesn't make sense you have no say in it shut the fuck up james you're stupid mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like <laughs> it it's just so negative and tiktok is just another thing adding on to that tiktok is like i feel like it's like maybe i'm i'm just speaking because i'm kind of mad about youtube because of this discussion but like it kind of feels like the worst part of youtube in one platform it's like the entirety of canceled culture i feel like is embodied by tiktok because you'll see so people who aren't important who don't do anything get super famous in a super like short amount of time just because of the algorithm and then be canceled because doing one little thing and i understand canceling people f- for like valid reasons like oh he you know did something to somebody or he said something that was bad but like oh she ate at a dinner table and w- didn't like the food she was eating like reasons like that like what the heck bro first of all you guys you guys made her fa- like obviously i'm talking about charlie d'amelio and her sister and her family but like you guys made her popular she's just a kid who like posting videos on this app you made her popular you hyped her up she makes a face when she's eating dinner and she's over it like i don't understand the logic the whole app because it's run by like children so it's like very impulsive behavior by everybody who's like yeah. you know like a vocal minority of the app i think uh Charlie D'Amelio is an interesting case uh, when it came to internet cancel culture because it really just, like, fucking put it into perspective Mm -hmm. for me. Just going, like, um, you know, like, who fucking cares? Really? Like, Charlie D'Amelio getting canceled for asking for, like, what, Mm -hmm. 100 million followers or something on TikTok, (laughs) right? Everyone was giving her shit. Everyone was going, like, yo, fuck you. Like, you don't deserve it and shit. You literally, like... And then, like, I'm not a Charlie D'Amelio stan by any standard. But Mm -hmm. even I can see it is the most harmless thing that one can do. Why? Because PewDiePie literally did the same thing (laughs) five months before and nobody gave a fucking shit. So Mm -hmm. why do we give a shit now if it's just some fucking kid? Let them be famous. Let them know what it's like to be famous. Yeah, and you know what? It's like, like just generally, especially like a lot of people who are, I don't know. I think I just have a problem with people like making children famous and then canceling them for making mistakes. Like she, she hasn't, I don't even think she's been famous for a year, maybe only a year that she's been really famous, famous. But even then it's like, it takes years for people on the internet to like, you know, become proper influencers and know what to say properly and know how to act. Like, that's not a lifestyle each of us live. Like, I make a lot of mistakes. If I was being recorded 24-7, I get canceled probably so quick. Like, I don't I do not do anything bad, but, like... For like, sure, like, me. Just, Jesus. It, it's so easy. Like, she's just a child, and I feel like... I don't know. I don't know what it... I think it's partly jealousy by her audience members or something. Like, they hold her up to, like, an impossible standard that she needs to be this perfect human being because she's an influence because people choose to follow her but it's not like she begged for it it's not like she asked for it it just happened to her so i just yeah it's so stupid it is stupid and another thing with uh cancel culture uh that i think a lot more people need to be more educated with is um there's this great video i watched by this uh like this news comedian person like he talks Mm -hmm. about the news john oliver style Uh, his name is some more news um and like uh 
he he taught he made this big ass video like this 40 minute long video talking about the idea of cancel culture and basically saying that it very much does not exist not in the way that a lot of people think it does mm. right like obviously yes people can be canceled right you can shut someone out of your life for doing stupid shit right saying heinous stuff um but when it comes to celebrities it does not fucking exist and it it like it pokes fun at both like both sides the people doing the canceling and the people saying that cancel culture is ruining everything mm -hmm. like the people that say like cancel culture is ruining everything are mainly like these old white celebrities going like oh so you're telling me i'm gonna lose my job because i said a racist joke on twitter 10 years ago what are you kidding me has the world gone mad it doesn't exist for you sir because you are a celebrity <laughs> remember when everyone canceled louis ck for uh jerking off in front of women without their consent and that shit right Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Louis C.K. being cancelled. Does anyone remember the fact that he literally still does, com like, shows and does appearances and stuff like that after it? Nobody's gonna say a fucking word now. No one's gonna be like, oh, keep the cancel train running, come on! No one's gonna say that because no one gives a shit at that point. It's a very, very immediate thing. It's like, mm -hmm. oh... Cancel Dustin Hoffman. Cancel this person. Cancel Charlie D'Amelio. Cancel everyone. It's a very immediate reaction with no thinking of long-term consequences. People just say it so they can be like, oh, got that out of my chest, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that we should hold people fucking accountable. Yes, cancel canceling people should be an actual fucking thing. But you should stick up to it, right? Mm -hmm. If Harvey fucking Weinstein rises from his decrepit, skeleton-y grave and oh starts God. making movies again, I would hope to fucking God people start saying, fuck you, Harvey, get out of here. But you want to know a situation that is very much similar to that, that is happening and people are still in support of? Fucking Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey is still an actor in a lot of people's eyes and is still a good person, even though he molested young boys and shit like that. You know, like yeah. it, it is very much a big hypocrite moment. If you're going to say cancel Charlie D'Amelio, I love House of Cards. <laughs> I love the show Louie. I love fucking roman polanski films it's mm -hmm. very fucking hypocritical keep up your work if you're going to cancel someone but also do not be disappointed if they bounce back up again because they are celebrities they're gonna fucking continue growing as people and as celebrities and you know fucking i feel like accountable i guess i feel like the internet just likes to act impulsively whether it's you know with cancel culture or maybe this is kind of unrelated but like in my opinion like i feel like the way the black lives matter movement was treated was very impulsive like impulsive anger because of terrible things that happened but you don't see people still talking about it as much as they did before before everybody was very adamant to post a black screen and to put some resources up on their story but god forbid they keep talking about it now like it was a very impulsive action of very valid anger but like that isn't being kept up anymore and i just every time something like this happens whether it's like council culture or just a movement that dies down super quickly as quick as it like rises i just like i sit back and i reflect i'm like okay the world is just or the at least the general population that runs the internet and is uh, present on the internet is very impulsive in nature and it's just disappointing but it is what it is yeah like i i believe that it it, it is everyone's obligation to not be a bigot not be racist you yeah. know you know fight the fucking power you know really just stand up for the systems that are abusing minorities people of color 
uh, people of different sexual preference and shit like that. People mm -hmm. should, you know, help with that. You shouldn't just post a fucking black screen and say, hashtag Blackout Tuesday. <laughs> Blackout Tuesday, guys. Let's, let's support black people. Yay, let's do it. Like, and then forget about it. Like Literally. the week after, right? Like I, a lot of people they'll put up the argument, just going like, "Oh, like these creators, they can't just keep doing it, you know? They have their own stuff to make, right?" But there are creators that still fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Twitter is full of the, these types of people. Like even people that I listen to, like the Super Mega Podcast. Shouts out to Matt Watson and Ryan McGee. I love those two boys, but. They have a podcast, and obviously they talk about their funny gamer shit, you know, they're funny dudes. But whenever something happens, they make sure to bring light to it. Whether mm -hmm. it be, like, suicide prevention, or the Black Lives Matter movement, and how angry, angering it is, and, like, linking to petitions and shit like that, right? They still show their support without mm -hmm. having to sacrifice this idea that, oh, if they keep doing this, then they won't be able to make, like, their original content. It's mm -hmm. not true. You can still keep up the work, still keep up the things, keep retweeting, spreading your message, right? Like, some of these people, they just say hey like uh a cab black lives matter and then ooh, fucking That's slurpy it. sunday <laughs> just mm -hmm. got my slurpy at 7 11 and it it's like them good. <laughs> it's like participating in a trend like they they made black lives matter they made a very 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 valid um movement a trend you know for a few weeks you know in like june or july and then it was over and then that, that's what, how i i just don't like like I don't like cancel culture, but I also don't like the trend culture that I see on the internet, where like it's a trend to suddenly hate on this YouTuber. So let's all hate on him, and then like whatever, like we'll forget about it later on. Or like you know, let's it's a trend to post these kinds of things on our story, save the turtles, and now it's over. Okay, whatever, move on to the next thing. Like the internet just moves like that, and it's it's so frustrating to watch because one day they're really like passionate about this one subject, and the next day they completely forget about it and they move on to something else. And, you know, yeah. I see this with, like, people, like, like with Shane. Remember when everybody was going so hard on Shane? And now he's done, so we're like, okay, cool, move on to someone else now. And it's just, you know, so oh, thank gross. God. That, that whole shit, it's just, like, it, it, is, it is deeply entertaining. It, like, just to, just to see it, right, you know? Mm -hmm. We all have this instinct in us, I believe, that just wants chaos to happen. And when we see chaos, we're just like, oh fuck yeah but also like, tell me more yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah literally it's like when i saw that shane dawson shit i literally am the farthest away from the makeup community i mean <laughs> i did my makeup today so looking good by the I mean, way i was gonna hypocrite. say oh thank you <laughs> but like shit man like it was so interesting to watch because i just want to see like why why is everyone mad today why is everyone mm -hmm. going like this but I can already tell it's such a fucking harmful thing to keep on doing that, you know, to keep on saying, like, oh, uh, or keep on, like, fueling this fire, you know, of making everything a fucking trend. I could definitely mm -hmm. see there's going to be a lot of damage from that, you know? 100%. Um, fucking, fucking hell, man, the internet. It's just, it's a, it's a crazy time. A lot of people, um... Why, why was I starting that sentence with a lot of people? <laughs> uh, I watched a show called American Gods, and they they portray old gods as, like, these gods that have to reside in America because everyone stopped believing in them in favor of new gods. The three main ones being um, media, globalization, and um, technology. And the way that they portray the gods, they're in, like, human forms, right? The way they portray uh, technology is this bratty, impulsive, weird-looking teenager. Like, he has different really? hairstyles, cool, different, like, weird pieces of clothing. He's always just, like, it's like, oh, you think you're, you think you're cool shit, huh? Well, you're not cool shit. You're old shit. 
you're an old fucking guy. No one cares about you, right? He is like, wh- while the other gods, the other new gods here is like, come on, let's be, let's be reasonable here. He's always the one to be like, ah, oh, let's fucking punch him. Let's kill him. Let's kill him now. Like, why are we waiting? Like, shit like that. It is very much a great representation of um, technology and, like, internet and shit mm-hmm. like that. Because all these people are just like, eh, why is he, like, I hate when movies and media, they portray uh, technology and internet as this young child, you know? It's just like, it's the future, <laughs> right? It's like, it's because you guys, it is a it young is. child. It is mm-hmm. an impulsive, makes mistakes, dumb little child. We have still yet to master it. It's like, just because we have all these different types of social media and people speaking, like, with their voices, it is still very much a dangerous fucking thing for, um, people. Like, it's very much, like, a thing that could spread good information just as much as bad information, like, that quick. 100%. It is so fucking fast. But, fucking, the internet, man. (laughs) Like, we're, we're living in the future. We're living, living in the, the you know what? That's actually why I would like if I I used to really want to be like famous as a kid. Like I wanted to be like, you know, you might not know this about me, but I was really artsy as a kid. I really wanted to be like, I, <laughs> I wanted to be like a singer and like, and then I moved on to wanting to be an actor and everything. And I really wanted to be famous in like in some form of media. But I no longer ever want to be. I know you. I think you probably would <laughs> like it, but I for me would never want to be in that regard. If it was something like scientific, I would love to. Um, but like because it's like I don't know. The internet is just so harsh and mean, and I don't think I personally could handle like that kind of like yeah. impact or like those eyes all on me because they they move so quickly and they're so because it's anonymous like you're on the internet no one's gonna know right so it's so easy to just say anything and um not have that consequences go back to you yeah like fucking it it is it is so much easier to become like internet famous than it was like like years before mm-hmm. and it's v- very much like yeah i i i want it to be famous and part of me still wants to be famous i want to be like a film director or an actor mm-hmm. you know like i want i want to do shit that people will know me for but at the same time oh my god just today i posted a tiktok that um got 2000 uh views nice. and like almost 100 likes and immediately i was just like oh fuck no <laughs> like i was so stressed i was like oh god what's the next tiktok going to be what if people mm. see my old tiktoks oh i hate those tiktoks oh god like and i was thinking about it. it's like when i get a new follower or like even worse like a group of new followers i'm like who are these people? Do I know mm-hmm. them? Will they like me? <laughs> like, do I need to start dressing better? It's just like, ugh. I'm so worried no, I about know. my image already, and I'm not even famous. It's so But, bad. like, it's so crazy how you could, like, not even technically be famous famous, but, like, have some sort of following and still get, like... Like, hey, like, a lot of hate that's, like, unexpected. Like, with Abby, like, you know how the whole fish situation where people were just, like, you're a terrible person because you have a fish in a small bowl. And I understand the concern. Like, we want to, we love animals. We treat them nicely. But it's a, like, she she can change that. That doesn't need that much hate. But everybody was so angry and everybody kept talking about it. Like, if I were someone who was concerned about that fish, I saw comments, I'd move on. Like, I don't got to restate my opinion. But that poor girl got so much like hate for the fish god bless abby i don't know how she handles being famous i could know, never or being popular right i go through like, her tiktok sometimes and i'm like i feel like a proud mom i'm like oh, oh she's, she's so <laughs> good like, um, she must be living the life and meanwhile all these comments are coming in. it's like i cannot believe <laughs> that you're even keeping your fish in a fucking bowl everyone knows you gotta keep it in a fucking box okay I rent an aquarium at the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto just to keep my beta. I bet you they're all like 12 year olds too. Like, okay, calm down. We're it's okay. A, it's, we can deal with the situation. It's a sense of uh, righteousness going yeah. back to the impulsivity. It's like everyone wants to feel like they're doing good, right? That they're being a hero. 
right? It's okay, you know, we don't have to be right all the fucking time. It's important that if we do wrongs, we try to make them right again. But obviously, no one's gonna be fucking right all the time. I'm not gonna be fucking right, for sure. I probably got some so many views that people would get fucking absolutely upset about. But that's okay. I can learn from them. I can see, like, what's wrong with thinking that way and change, right? Mm -hmm. But that's only if people are considerate about it. If people are actually nice and willing to help. Like, don't just be like, you're a terrible person, for keeping a fish in a bowl like that, be like, hey, um, you know, it's not very helpful to the fish. It won't be very helpful to you if you keep your fish in a bowl like that. I would recommend a bigger space. Notice how mm -hmm. much nicer that is. How much That was such a perfect way of saying like, that, Kiev. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it's literally just like <laughs> so many people, they're aggressive right away. Just fucking mm -hmm. like go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself, you're a terrible person. And, like, as soon as someone calls them out on their damage, then they're gonna be like, what the fuck do you mean, huh? I'm just trying to fucking help. Does no one believe in help anymore? Am I just a... Am I Satan? It's like, no, man. Just fucking calm down a bit. Just like, <laughs> shit. Ugh. People can be so fucking... Ugh. I, I need to get you a soapbox because you're just spitting out facts, bro. You need a, you need an <laughs> audience to listen to you for this because this is this is some straight facts. Imagine if like the internet just didn't um, exist, and Ugh. like the f new form of Twitter was just this really convoluted, stupid <laughs> idea of people sitting on soapboxes in Young and Dundas Square, <laughs> oh my just God. going like, "I believe Parasite was a good movie and I like it." Yes! Yes, I love it. I love Parasite. I actually don't like Parasite. Oh, fuck you. And everyone just starts throwing <laughs> tomatoes at them. It's like, you should, damn, you should make that a thing. To... That's a solid <laughs> idea, Kim. <laughs> I will stand in the middle of Young and Dundas Square and read tweets just yes. to like, get a rise out of some people. <laughs> Does anyone still do soapboxes? When was the last time a soapbox was used? Because I've only ever heard of that in TV shows. Literally I think you should like reinvent it. 1950. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Make it a thing. Yes, let's bring back the French Revolution ways of doing it. Hear ye, hear ye. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, Shane Dawson's a racist twat. And everyone's like, yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> it's like the House of Commons. Have you ever seen videos of the House of Commons? In I don't uh, know Britain? what that is. I don't know what that is. I'm so uneducated on government stuff. You see? See different types of intelligences? I don't know shit wow, about anything like intelligence. Wow, back. Mm, no, I don't know. I thought you were going to make a Bridgington reference because old timely. Bridgington's old timely. Really, have you watched I it? I haven't even watched that show. I know everyone's horny now because fucking apparently it's the sexiest show on earth. Bro, I recommended it to my teacher like a dumbass. I didn't know it was like it's supposed to be like that. I was like, he's like, do you guys, because I was on the third episode and I think or second episode and at that point there was nothing like sexual but then like I'm in this call with my biochem prof and he's like, oh so do you guys have any like Netflix show recommendations? I'm trying to binge something. I'm like, oh Bridgington's pretty good. You should try Bridgington. Bridgington, my. I'm never. So I watched it with my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so bad! Oh my god. Bro, what's the What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you in uni? Because that's one. I think that's probably one of my top. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh god. Um. <laughs> okay, this is a terrible story. This is gonna be embarrassing on very many different levels because people it's gonna be embarrassing in the sense that people will just be like oh you're a fucking asshole <laughs> they're like oh god but i need to come clean right so um i so i had a photography class and there was this girl there right and she she was very much uh like those types of girls that like um they're just like oh hi Hi, yes, how are you? Like, that that type, right? At least to me. But then again, this is like, I'm the asshole in this situation. I'm completely <laughs> in the wrong in this situation. 
But, um, so I was just talking to Sophia, <laughs> and, uh, I was just, like, I was just singing, you know, I do this stupid shit, I do sing-songy voice, and, I'm, like, I just sing random songs I don't even, uh, fucking know, right? And, like, <laughs> so, this girl, she's just, like, um... She's like, wow, you sing really good. Like, and I could sense, the, like, the tone in her voice, right? And I was just like, oh, really? Yeah. And this is where the asshole part of me, like, really comes out. I just started immediately digging into this girl. I was just like, oh, so you, so, like, you think I sing good, huh? What, you want me to dance? Am I, am I your little fucking monkey? Am I just gonna dance for you now? Am yeah. I meant to enter, fucking entertain you, huh? And I, like, I just like, I just like. What'd you say? I just started going at it, right? And she's looking at me, going like. And she turns around and just continues working. Shut up. And then, like, up. immediately, I'm just like. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> and, and like, Sophia's just looking at me and just going like, "What the fuck was that? Why'd you do that?" <laughs> I was just like, I don't know, I don't know. And she literally leaves the fucking class. It's like, she, it was after class anyways, but she leaves the class after that. She was going to do some more work, I know. And then, like, I was just like... Kia, you literally oh, made an enemy. Fuck. What the heck? Oh, oh my God. God. And what's even worse is that every single class after that, she was just really nice to me. And I was just like... <laughs> Oh god damn it. And like, Cam. Uh, oh it's my so god. Fucked. Oh, that's god. so funny. Well, you know what? It's like you'll never see her again, so it's not everyone like oh better with you. I mean at this point if I'm dropping out. <laughs> like, you know, something else that happened to me. Oh sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Keep oh no, no, no. I want I want to hear yours. No, fuck you. Um I think this I, this I think that might I don't know if I think this might be you just because it's like not just me being embarrassed with someone else, but like at least 200 people witnessed what I just did. Okay. So I was in a class, I was in my bio class and my professor at the time, he's just such a weird man. If I showed you a picture of him, he looks like Albert Einstein. His hair was so wacky. He's such a wacky guy. He'd talk about the weirdest things. Anyways, he was very yeah. like, I would try to explain him to my friends and they'd be like, okay, well, you're, you're being dramatic on some things but i was like no he's real he's real then he would always do this thing where he would make bird sounds and i'm going to show you this video at some point but he's really good at making bird sounds and so whenever he talks about a bird he'll make the sound that it makes and so i'm like i gotta record this otherwise my friends are not gonna believe me so i pull out snapchat i have my headphones on so like if there's any audio playback i can hear it someone else no one else can hear it i record him doing it and then I turned on my volume because I'm going to unplug my phone and, like, you know, send it. Why is this a thing? But I turned on my volume. I, I unplugged my it. headphones. And everybody in the lecture hall hears him going brah, brah, from my phone. And he looks at me, Kiev. He made eye contact with me for, like, two seconds. And I put my head down oh, so God. fucking fast. It was the most <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the stupidest fucking things let's just call out apple for this if i turn down the volume on my headphones i want to know that the volume is down on my fucking phone as well Shit, like bro. why it was so bad oh, anyways god that just like that just gutted me dude like just imagining that happening to me i'd be like all right well I guess this is where I drop out now. The, literally, oh my, my thought. I was like, should I drop the class? We're already like ha more than halfway <laughs> in, but. Arwa so Halal MD, more like Arwa Halal McDonald's employee <laughs> now. Um, like, it's just. <laughs> so bad. Oh my uh, god. It's, it's shit, man. That fucking sucks. <sighs> Fuck that. <laughs> Uh, fucking even Arwa, the most perfect person in no. the world. No, oh my god. Perfect. <laughs> thought. Wow. Do you even listen to those vinyl records that are behind you? They, I technically stole them from the person who lived here before me. She left what the them. Fuck? She didn't come pick them up, so I put them on my wall. They're real records. I don't know what they okay, are. Okay, so but what, they look cool. where are the bands? Well, one of them was Mort M Mozart. I said Mozart. <laughs> Mozart. Mercy. And one of them's Mozart. And uh, it's Taller Swift. 
color no they're all like vintage like they're actual like vintage i shouldn't probably i probably shouldn't have put them on my wall but they look pretty yeah cute, you probably right? should have sold them i probably yeah. could have i fucking weren't i, I only I have probably one will still. on my wall and it's uh oh, oh wait oh, oh you like MF put the doom oh yeah it's oh, literally rip, just rip one Doom. Vinyl. It looks so shitty, but I'm gonna add more. Rest in peace, MF Doom. God bless him. Um, yeah, man. Oh, here's a here's a fi- final question. I I do have one final question. You being part of you know media and the internet and the culture like that, um, has there ever been like a celebrity death that has fucked with you? like severely fucked with you just Mm. like you know i've never i've never been like like i don't really get become a fan of many celebrities i'll like them in passing but like the ones that shake me are the ones that i have seen super frequently and could never think of them dying like uh cameron boyce like rip cameron boyce when he died it freaked me the fuck out because i was like he's literally my childhood like i watched him grow up as i grew up on like jesse so that really messed me up not really like messed me up but like messed with me because i was like no way he's dead of everyone who could be dead he's the one who died like you know that was really weird um yeah him like i i really loved him too i thought he was an amazing like uh actor and just he He seemed like an amazing person my favorite character on jesse (laughs) Mm -hmm. um do you think there ever will be a celebrity that you can think of now or a person um that if they were to die right now that you'd be like oh god like why i wonder i don't know maybe like i guess if it's like maybe if it was pewdiepie or something i don't see i'm not like i'm not even like (laughs) that big of a i'm not a fan of him or anything but like he would like that would freak me out so much the internet the internet would yeah no they would lose his collective minds. There would be people saying, oh, yeah, fuck him. He's dead. You know, he was a racist or, like, all that shit. And I was like, no, fuck you. He played uh, Happy Wheels and he gave me good adventure times. I, Cause, I started yeah. with this one the most. <laughs> I'm just my, like, My childhood. You know, he was my childhood. I wouldn't lo- yeah. want him to die. It's literally like, ugh, if any internet personality today died, shit. Like, any TikTok be star, weird. shit. Oh, oh my god, god, if a TikTok star died, that'd be... Cr- like, I, I don't want to imagine that because they're all kids. Like, I don't want... Yeah, you know. that's true. But, the, Knock on wood, they don't die, for sure. But, like, it's just it's just the type of thing, like, looping back to the effect of the internet, you know? Mm-hmm. But more so in, like, uh, kind of more of a bringy together kind of way. When someone, like, dies and people talk about it on the internet, there's so many people that are already just going to be like, oh... You know, like, I loved him for this. I loved her for this. And um, I, I think it's very interesting, especially when a celebrity death happens. Obviously, there are people that exploit it. There's a lot of people that exploit it. Um, mm-hmm. Like, when Kobe Bryant died, just, like, yeah. s- sales for, like, the fucking Kobe Bryant jersey, like, shot up, you know. And, like, that, I would say that's a pretty big fucking form of exploitation. Or people that are just kind of, like, faking it almost mm-hmm. just pretending to care for the sake of caring you know in the same way that like if uh say like a musician like for example drake he um he like made tweets about mf doom before and just going like oh i love mf doom he like quote quoted him in a tweet right and so many of these underground hip-hop fans were just like Drake, do you fucking actually listen to MF Doom? You literally make the exact opposite of his fucking music, right? Mm -hmm. It would be the same case if someone died, like a celebrity could fake it, essentially just being like, oh, he was a big inspiration to me, you know, absolutely loved him. Just to get a little bit of that, you know, that good old clout, you know, so... I, I think that's like more of the exploitation side. But I think I would like to think a lot of people can be united when a loss mm-hmm. happens and just be like It happens you know? like when um I forget the actor's name but the one who plays Black Panther, I feel like it was I felt Chadwick a lot of Boseman. unity. Yeah, rest his yeah. soul. I felt a lot of unity at least in the like Avengers community, you know? A lot of people like yeah. took the time to appreciate his work and appreciate the things he's been a part of. 
Yeah, so and experience like the shit that he also starred in other than Black Panther. Because he's yeah. a great actor. He, he fucking, the first movie I ever saw him in was like, a, well, I saw him in the trailer. Uh, the Jackie Robinson movie. He played Jackie Robinson. He also played fucking, um, I was going to say James Charles. Uh, <laughs> not, not him. Uh, fuck, what's his name? Uh, Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Oh my God. He Ray Charles. <laughs> Um, and he was absolutely fucking excellent in that. He's a very talented actor, and I miss him so fucking much. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but it's the type of thing, you know, where, like, something like that happens. Everyone takes the time to really sit down and say, instead of just, you know, being filled with guilt and remorse, let's, like, fill it with life, you know. Recommend your favorites of his movies, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, really really pass him on you know make him make him feel good up in wherever he is and mm -hmm. uh hmm, it's nice but um that's a i, th I think uh, we've been going for a bit now i know <laughs> you're a very busy lady with a lot of educational priorities such as watching the new uh james charles video and the uh, <laughs> uh, frenemies podcast featuring h3 i'm h3 actually and gonna go watch a Oh my god, yeah. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go do my academic duties and watch an episode of Bridgington with my roommates after this. That's what's on <laughs> store. That's what's in store for me. Y'all getting horny over what? Victorian era baddies? Get out of here. Is that you know, probably sex back then was probably the kinkiest, so I can't even blame people that I like mean it. according to Bridgerton it it was like goddamn. <laughs> Pro probably better know. than fifty shades, if you ask me. I've but never watched it, so I wouldn't know. Have I you watched did. it? I watched like Rated. all all three of them. Yeah, Just oh one night. Oh, God. <laughs> what a fucking horrifying time. I hate all of Ra those movies equally. Rate the trilogy. Or is it a trilogy? Rate the tr yeah, it's a trilogy. Um I like the from number one, like the first fifty shades, you know, very much introduces everything actually it just goes like in ascending order when i think about it my least favorite one is the newest one that came out because it was just <laughs> creating fucking stupid tension for no goddamn reason it's just like how do we make this uh sex thriller even more <laughs> thrilling introduce a new man <laughs> and like introduce a choice that dakota johnson has to make the first choice she has to fucking make out of being a submissive little bitch to Christian Grey and I don't even fucking remember the other dude's fucking name uh John Black <laughs> like like I wouldn't fucking know um but yeah first 50 shades of grey so much fun if I were to recommend it drink to it get really high um don't Maybe. expect to get horny because you definitely won't I don't think I'm gonna end up watching it but thank you for the recommendation yeah, they added CGI pubes just to make it more realistic uh, really? on Dakota Johnson's body. Like really? For, and it's it's like pretty bad CGI pubes. It's fucking weird. Um, uh. <laughs> see, if I didn't mention it, no one would fucking notice it. But very how much how did is you there. even find that out? How do you know? I searched that. on. I did my research. I did of course. Like, little, <laughs> like after every movie I watch, I'm just like, hmm what's this like it's like when justice league came out and everyone was like yo henry cavill's mustache is fucking cgi'd out so it looks like he just has a dead upper lip and he's just like talking like this and he's just like i i'm superman i love superman it's so good <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking weird but um to close it off arwa do you have anything to say to the cool kids family you know I I hope everyone's having a great day. Thank you so much for having me, Kiev. Oh my goodness. Of course, of course. Definitely probably will be back for a future episode. And you'll maybe be a doctor at that point. You know, who knows? Maybe you'll be world famous. Maybe you'll prescribe <laughs> me my Letzapram, my Ozak, my Prozac, my uh, Lipidol, my heroin, my uh, <laughs> fucking Zanis. All of them. I will give you all of them. Just kidding. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of that episode. Uh, God bless you. 
Arla, you're a wonderful guest. I hope everyone has a good night. And uh, see you in the fucking next episode. Fucking... Oh, stay safe. Also. <laughs> Wear your mask. Don't be a fucking...